This video is going to talk about a resistor network uh, called an R2R resistor ladder. And these are typically used for very simple digital to analog conversion. Uh, so we'll talk about uh, what they are, we'll do a little bit of analysis on them, and, uh, and then show some examples of them. So uh, an R2R resistor network is really just a, a network of connected resistors and it's called an R2R network because there's really only two resistor values that are in the network. There's a, you know, one value and then essentially twice its value, or 2x. So it's called R and 2R. So it really does, it's not that important really what each of these resistor values are, but just the fact that the ratio is 1 to 2. So if that's a 1K, that's a 2K. If this is a 2K, that's a 4K, etc. Okay. So, um, and they're used to, to do basic uh, digital to analog conversion. Because if you apply a digital signal to you know, these various taps here, you essentially can create an analog output here, which is essentially the analog conversion of that. So in this case, if I had a four four bits here, uh, that could define one of 16 analog voltage levels that would appear here. And uh, if you look at this, you might go, you know, if you've ever taken any electronics classes in school, you'd say, oh, there's one of these nightmare networks to try to solve and figure out. It's actually pretty easy. It's a couple of unique, and we'll, we'll actually walk through that. But a couple of unique properties of R2R networks is that um, each bit, you know, of uh, of the input is essentially a binary weighted uh, output, uh, to binary weighted to the output, uh, basically through uh, kind of current sharing and things like that. The output resistance, regardless of how many bits are used, the output resistance of these networks is always equal to the value R. And uh, we'll show you why. It's actually pretty simple. It's kind of neat. And uh, there's only two values of resistors used, and uh, or really it could even be one, because you could make up this this resistor here as a as a parallel combination of those two, um, you know, or make this guy up as a series combination of this one. And by doing that, you could have a bunch of match resistors, and you get some pretty decent accuracy out of a very simple network like this. So it turns out that the analysis, which looks like it might be you know, crazy with math, is actually pretty easy when you consider using two principles, the Thevenin equivalent circuits and superposition. So we use the Thevenin equivalent circuits to kind of figure out and break the circuit down into some simple elements. And then when we go to calculate values, we use superposition. So uh, let's walk through. It's actually uh, a lot easier than the words make it sound. So. Uh, Kind of look over here at uh, an equivalent circuit here. So here's here's that same circuit kind of just drawn again. Okay, and we're going to use some seven and equivalent circuits to kind of calculate out um, what the impedance is of this circuit. Okay, and uh, so if we if we kind of take a look at this and say, well, if we uh, kind of look you know and break these things up, the seven and basically says that uh, you know I can kind of break a circuit anywhere as long as it contains just linear elements like resistors and voltage sources at current sources. Thevenin basically says I can break this thing and then from this point forward replace whatever I have here with a, a single voltage source and a, and, a, and a resistor. Okay, The voltage source would be the open circuit voltage that would appear here if nothing was connected and the resistance is essentially the equivalent of resistance looking in here as if all the voltage sources were shorted and the current sources were open. So if I break the circuit here that could break down if I just want to look at impedance, I'll just make all these voltage sources, you know, zero. So that'll make make them look like they're at ground. So these two resistors would then look like resistors to ground. So that that part of the circuit would simplify out to a simple resistor, you know, of value R. Two parallel resistors of two R is equal to one resistor of R. Now, if I look at this, I've got R and R in series. So that's essentially two R, and there's two R right here. So that could be replaced by another 2R here, okay? Uh, now, so this 2R and 2R are now essentially in parallel, okay? That gets replaced then by another R. So you can kind of see the, the process here, no matter how many stages we have, these two guys add to 2R, okay? And then that 2R in parallel with this 2R basically gets you to another value of R, and then these, these two become another 2R, in parallel with that 2R, and this whole thing simplifies down to these two resistors, okay, which are both 2R, which is simply uh, the output impedance is equal to R. 
So it's a pretty simple thing. Uh, but we're going to kind of come back to this concept that, uh, you know, by looking back from any one of the stages, okay, looking back always looks like R. It's going to become important when we start calculating uh, voltage values. So let's look at, uh, at doing that. Okay. So here's uh, the same circuit again. Uh, what we'll do is that the, these nodes here at the top could be connected to, say, digital outputs. That could be, you know, 3.3 volts or 5 volts. And if it's like a CMOS circuit like this Arduino sitting back here, you know, that could be a, uh, you know, like, you know, 5 volts, you know, at each of those points. So we'll just call it, you know, voltage for bit number 0, voltage for bit 1, voltage for bit 2, voltage for bit 3. Okay. So if we want to calculate out and say, well, you know, what what would be the resulting voltage out here, okay, for a given you know four bit code that appears here? Well, by superposition, what that allows us to do is say we'll short out all of the voltage sources except the one that we're going to calculate for, and do this um, for each of the various voltage sources. So we'd have to do it as many as four times, okay, and then sum all those results, and that's how superposition works. We're also going to use the Thevenin and equivalent circuits to kind of calculate out and help us out here. It actually works out uh, to be pretty easy. So if we let's just start off by saying, well, let's start off and looking at the voltage contribution just from bit zero. Okay. So if, if we have a voltage that appears here, okay, I'm, I'm just going to kind of leave it as a, an arbitrary voltage at this point. So if I say I've got a voltage sitting here, and if I you know kind of cut the circuit here, what's the equivalent looking in here? Okay. So if I cut the circuit here. I'd have a voltage here going to ground across two equal resistors, so we know the voltage here would be half of that voltage. Okay, so my open circuit voltage is V of B0 divided by 2. And the equivalent resistance, we already figured that out on the previous page, would be R. So this would reduce down to this. Equivalent resistance of R and voltage of B over 2. Now if I go back and I look at this carefully, I've got R in series with R, okay, also in series with 2R up here. So that's 2R, that's 2R, you know, right to here, and I've got this voltage. So the voltage that's going to appear then uh, at this point is going to be half again of that voltage, okay. So that whole thing then, if we flip over the next page, simplifies out to VB0 divided by 4, right, half of, you know, VB0 divided by 2. And now I'm left with the same circuit again. Okay, I've got uh, you know, 2R and 2R. So the voltage appearing here, if I break the circuit here, would be half of this, or V B0 divided by 8. Okay, that's on our next page here. Okay, I'm left with the same circuit again. So now the voltage that it would appear here would be simply V B0 divided by 16 with a series resistor of R. So the voltage contribution from you know, the first bit is just one sixteenth of the that logic voltage. So let's say I wanted to calculate out uh, for you know, some of the other bits. What we can do is let's kind of move these pages out of here. Let's say uh, let's put something on top of that so it doesn't move. There we go. So let's say that I want to calculate out for. Uh, let's see what I got here. Let's say I want to calculate out for. Um, the contribution of say B, B, B2. So I want to work my way back and figure out what the other impedances are. And we kind of know from the previous page that I'm going to eliminate and, and short out the ones that I'm not talking about here. So uh, if I want to start simplifying that circuit, um, I can cut the circuit here, replace that with just a resistor. We saw that from the previous page of how we were able to just kind of, the impedance looking in at this point, okay, is just going to be equal to R. Okay, because remember this guy is shorted the ground, this guy is shorted the ground, because we're not considering them at this point. I'm considering this voltage. So these guys are ground. Cutting the circuit here or here makes it look like R, so I can simply replace that with the resistor R. Now I've got this voltage, okay, which is, you know, say 5 volts or whatever. And again, that's going to see that same voltage divider, 2R here and 2R here. So the voltage here is going to just be half of that. Okay, so that simplifies out to... You know, V of bit number 2 divided by 2. And I've got that same resistor divider here again. You can see the, co the concept here is all exactly the same as we started with the first one. So obviously that the voltage that appears here is going to just be half of that. Okay, so if I flip this last page, I wind up saying that I've got V of B2 
divided by four is, is what's going to the output. Now, if I only had those two bits, you know, bit zero and bit two, I would simply add this voltage plus the VB of zero divided by 16. That would be my output voltage. So in general terms, you know, that for this four bit one, we essentially would take the V output is equal to if the first bit is is on, like you know, five volts would be five volts divided by sixteen, and if bit two is on, it'd be five volts divided by eight. Plus, if, if this was on, it'd be five volts divided by four, etc. And this you could just keep expanding this out, actually going the other way for more and more bits in the R two R ladder. And uh, if uh, one of those you know bits is equal to zero, you just take it out of the equation. You don't use it. So. Uh, very simply, uh, it, it's a very simple resistive you know, voltage divider network that turns a parallel digital word into an analog output. So, uh, so I actually built one of these. Okay, um, it's actually two R2R ladders in here. I've got it hooked up to my Arduino Uno back here, and uh, so uh, these guys are sitting on uh, an 8-bit port uh, down here. And then there's another 6-bit port up here. Uh, the uh, Arduino Uno uh, gives you access to one full 8-bit port and one 6-bit uh, port that you can control directly kind of through hardware registers within the Uno uh, or within the, uh, the microcontroller. And uh, I kind of did this. My motivation was to kind of speed up the uh, uh, analog to digital conversion rather than using the pulse width modulator outputs uh, which you have to filter and wait for them to settle by converting to an analog voltage with this a simple parallel word here you can make changes to that analog voltage uh, very quickly so uh, so I've got instrumented up here I've got uh, a mixed signal scope uh, behind me it's actually a mixed domain oscilloscope we're only but we're only using essentially the analog input and digital inputs uh, for this particular uh, demo here and uh, I'm using just the 6-bit uh, port here. I've got uh, so all six of those bits kind of probed with the digital probes and I've got the output of the ladder kind of probed uh, with uh, this probe right here. Okay, actually it's that one way back there. So and I've got a simple uh, bit of code that uh, I put together uh, on here that uh, really does nothing more than is a binary counter to go from all zeros on this 6-bit all the way up to all 1s, which would be you know, counting from 0 to 63 and then wrapping around. And if we look on the mixed signal scope, uh, here's the values of the 6 bits. So we can see bit 0 kind of toggling quick, and then every other transition we get bit 1 toggling, bit 2, bit 3, bit 4, bit 5. So there's my 6 bits uh, for the parallel word that's going into the R2R ladder. And if we look you know, kind of correspondingly, this is the analog voltage, okay, that is corresponding to that. So when they were all zeros, we're down at the lowest uh, value here. And then this first bit goes one, we get the first step. Then that bit goes low, we get the next bit that goes one, and we're just doing a binary count, and we can actually see the stair step going across, okay. Uh, so, and this loop basically just runs through all of those codes all the way up till we reach 64 and then come down. And uh, we got, well, 64 is binary, it's also 3F in hex. Well, we could look at this a couple of ways. If I, I could turn on an event table here and actually look at, uh, at the values. So I can actually see this is the top end of it here at the very beginning of the screen, okay, right up here. And then we can see it goes up to 3F, then it goes back to zero and counts 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And this would go all the way up if I scrolled the table down, okay, to do all of these codes. You can also look at them by just zooming in on the scope. Okay, if I zoom in here, I'm taking this portion of uh, you know, this waveform now and then zooming in on it down here. So I've stretched things out a bit. So I can see here that parallel you know, bus is all zeros. That's my zero value. Then one, then two, then three, then four. So I literally can see my digital to analog conversion working my way across. And I can scroll this through okay, and look at that progression all the way through this record, okay, just to kind of show how that works. So my motivation for doing this was actually just kind of selfish. Uh, uh, you may remember I did a, a video a couple of weeks ago where I showed uh, 
drawing a little X picture in XY on an analog scope using the Arduino, and I drew out my call sign. And you might also remember from that video that the uh, it uh, was kind of a little flickery because uh, I could I could only uh, toggle those pulse width modulated outputs so fast. Even though uh, my friend uh, John De Cristofaro showed me the trick of how to make the PDEB, the pulse width modulator frequency even faster, but uh, with the number of vertices I was running through, it uh, it still gave me some flicker because it would only update that pattern, you know, maybe uh, ten times a second or so. So by uh, creating the analog voltages through these R2R ladders and just changing, you know, the the parallel words that are appearing here at these two ports. I can make those changes much faster. So I put together uh, another little sketch uh, to go do that. So let me load that guy up here. Okay. So now what's what's going on is I've got. Uh, in fact, if we look here on the screen, I can just see. Let's do a single capture. This is just one of those two. You can see all the digital words. So we can see the analog values that they correspond to. Okay. But now if we uh, go over to the scope, uh, the analog scope, I've got that connected to. The outputs of these things, we can see that uh, that resulting W2AEW now is is flicker free because it's literally being updated on the order of about 160 or 170 times a second. So uh, faster than uh, the phosphor has a chance to decay, and faster than uh, your eye, you know, would uh, would catch. So now it looks like a nice stable uh, display there. So again, it was just for fun, just not doing anything useful here. But uh, I thought that maybe, uh, you know, at least uh, introducing you to what an R2R ladder was might uh, open up some possibilities for what you might be doing with your, your Arduinos or microcontroller things and, and converting uh, digital, parallel digital values directly into analog values without relying on uh, pulse width modulated values and filters. So uh, anyway, I hope you found this useful. And again, comments and questions are uh, always welcome. Thank you.